All right, it's Saturday morning. It's roughly three Kelvin. I can feel my atoms starting to slow down, but I have coffee. Now, here to watch my kid play football. Oh, wish me luck. Why do I keep wearing these shoes? All right, we're back. We didn't win, never mind. And it's still freezing cold, but today I want to cover something very important. And this is all about how to go from zero sales through to a thousand dollars a month from book sales. And if you're just starting out, this might sound a little bit intimidating, but I'm going to break it all down for you. So all the marketing activities that we're going to look at are things that you can start doing right now that don't cost an absolute fortune to do and get great results. But first, I want to look a little bit at the numbers behind this. So making $1,000 a month from book sales involves a little bit of math. So let's jump in. As a quick aside, it is still freezing cold. I have the giant rig to lug around with me, so I'm gonna do my best um, not to die of exhaustion um, or freeze to death. All right, the math behind book sales then. So let's break it down. $1,000 a month. If you're selling a $4.99 ebook, for example, which is a very common price for indies, um, that's a royalty rate of 70%. That's about $3.50. And after delivery fees and various other charges that get slapped on there, um, you're looking at around about 300 sales a month to hit that $1,000 goal. 300 sales a month is about 10 sales a day. But this is where it gets more interesting. So if you just have the one book, the average number of books that a reader can purchase from you is, of course, one. If you have more than one book, then we have a look at what we call a read-through rate. So this is the average number of people who will buy more than one book. So for example, if you have three books, your average number of books sold per reader might be something like 1.5. If you have six books, your average number of books sold might be two. If you have 30 books, your average number of books sold might be 10. In other words, for every one copy of book one of your series or the first book in your collection, how many others will they go on to read? So let's say you have six books and your average number of books purchased is 2.5. That means you only need to sell four copies of the first book to equal 10 per day because those people are going to read book one and then move on to the other ones. So that means instead of having to send traffic to your book page to sell 10 copies a day, you only have to send traffic to your book page to sell four copies a day because those people are going to go on and read 2.5 books each, equaling 10 per day, 300 per month, which is that $1,000 a month goal. And if you only have to sell four copies of book one, that's fewer people you have to get to your book page in the first place. So if you have a conversion rate, let's say of 10%, if you have one book, you've got to sell 10 books a day, then you have to send 100 people to your book page to get that target. If your conversion rate is still 10%, but you only have to sell four books, then you only have to send 40 people to your book page. Do you see how it works? The more books you have, the better your read-through rate, the easier this is going to be. Now, if you only have one book, don't worry. It just means you have to work a little bit harder to send more traffic to your book page to get that sales target. And like I said, as you release new books going forward, it's going to get easier and easier. So at the end of the day, it all really comes down to how many books people are going to buy from your catalog on average and how many people you can send to your book page. And that second part is what we refer to as traffic. So if you can send enough traffic to your book page and get a good enough read through, then you can hit that target quite easily. So in this video, we're going to look at all the things you need to do to convert as many people as possible into readers, encourage them to read as many books as possible, and how to increase the number of people visiting your book page in the first place. In other words, everything you need to do to get to that thousand dollar a month target. So let's go. I just love carrying this thing around. It's great fun. The first thing that we need to do when looking at improving our sales to get to that thousand dollars a month target is improving the number of people who actually pick up our books in the first place and then read through to others. And we've talked about this a bit in previous videos, but this is where your cover design, your description and your look inside and titles all play a big role. So with the cover in particular, you need to really nail this to make sure that people are actually clicking on your book in the first place. It's like on YouTube, on here, for example, you know, you're seeing videos all down the right hand side of the page underneath on the home page. And the reason most people click on these is the thumbnail. And on the Kindle store, your book cover is your thumbnail. So the more compelling your book cover is and the more appropriate it is to the genre and the better it communicates what your book is about, the more clicks you're going to get in the first place. And especially if you're using Amazon ads or Facebook ads, having a great cover means more people are going to click through to it and your costs are going to be lower. 
after people have clicked through to your book page on Amazon or the other ebook stores, they're going to start looking at the description, so the blurb or the synopsis um, that tells people what your book is actually about. And as we've said in previous videos, this isn't an opportunity just to regurgitate the major plot points. This is where you need to demonstrate what the book's about and show what the emotional connection is between your book and the reader, you know, the people who are actually going to buy it. So in the description, we're outlining the protagonist, the opposition, the conflict and the stakes, and we're doing it in an interesting way to get people excited enough to buy. So from our testing, we found that when we swapped out our slightly poor descriptions for a much better one, our conversion rate increased by up to 50%. So this is huge. Having a great cover and a great description is usually the biggest change that people can make to get their sales up. Because let's face it, authors aren't cover designers. Authors also generally aren't copywriters. And the description is basically copywriting, it's a sales pitch. And authors aren't naturally good at this. And we're not naturally good at cover design either. So it makes sense that these are kind of the two areas where we struggle the most. So whenever anyone asks me, how do I get my sales up? The first thing I look at is the cover and the description. And in almost all cases, improvements can be made there. And remember, the more people who can read through from book one to book two and beyond, the fewer copies of book one you have to sell to hit your revenue target. All right, moving on. So once our book pages are optimized to be the best they can be and the conversion rate is as high as we can get it, the read through rates looking good. The next thing to look at then is how do we get traffic to that book page? So remember, if you're writing in a series, then really you want to focus on selling book one. Because it's very difficult to sell someone the third book in a series if they've not read the first two. And if your read through rate is strong, then of course it means that you're going to pick up sales of your other books. So it makes sense to focus on book one. If you're writing standalones, then again, if you can find a way to collect these together under a common theme or common characters or a common universe, then this really helps with read through rate, which makes your life much easier. So then the goal becomes, of course, getting traffic to book one in the first place. And thankfully, there's no shortage of traffic on the internet. And there's plenty of ways that you can get people to click through to your book page. So that's what we're going to be looking at next. So let's move on. Right, so traffic strategy number one, and this is one I recommend, um, especially for beginners, because it gets you to that sustainable level really quickly and doesn't cost anything to do. Um, and that's using reader magnets. Now, in essence, reader magnets is having a free book on Amazon and the other ebook store. So we call this perma free and then offering a second book or something else for free to entice people to join your mailing list. Now, these things don't necessarily have to be full novels. They could be short stories, novellas. If you write nonfiction, they could be um, short how to books. They could be cheat sheets. You know, it could be recipes. They could be pretty much anything. But the goal is to have something permanently free on Amazon to draw people in and then offer a second thing for free in return for their email address. So that's getting them off Amazon and the other ebook stores and onto your mailing list, which then means that you can set up some automated emails to go out to them after an appropriate amount of time, which tells them about the other books in your catalog. You'll also find that having this strategy means that you will grow organic sales as well. So you'll be getting sales from these automated emails and any manual broadcasts you send out, but also people will organically move through your series too. And the more downloads you can get of book one, the more sales you'll get of the subsequent books too. And building that email list is incredibly important for having that direct line of communication between you and your readers, you know, the people who actually buy your books and leave you good reviews. And the bigger the email list that you have, the stronger your launches will be, the more reviews you'll have, and the more sales you'll make. I've got lots and lots of resources about reader magnets. Check the links underneath the description. I'll go through it in more detail for you. Right, it's getting ridiculously cold out here. Um, so let's head inside. Right, we're back inside. Right, that's better. I can start to feel feelings again. So we talked about reader magnets and that's just one way of getting traffic through to your books and starting to build that audience. Another great method I like to recommend to people is giveaways, also known as contests or sweepstakes. And the basic principle of this is you have a prize and people enter, you pick a winner at random. Now you probably see these kind of things all the time. The problem is though, is that most people do it wrong. So we don't want to keep just everybody who's interested in winning a prize because that's far too broad. What we want to do is try and narrow that down as much as possible to just focus on your target reader. And the way we do that is by offering a prize that only really your reader is interested in. So for example, um, a Kindle Paperwhite is one that I use quite a lot, preloaded with some eBooks 
in your genre, preferably your own books. And this way, you're only going to attract the people who are interested in A, reading, and B, reading the kind of things that you write. So the way this works then is you set up a contest using some software like Rafflecopter, which has a free plan, or Up Viral or King Sumo giveaways. There's a fair few giveaway contest programs out there, and then you list your contest on giveaway directories. And there are hundreds and hundreds of these websites all over the internet. I particularly recommend giveawayfrenzy.com and giveawaypromote.com. And once you've got your contest listed on as many sites as possible, this is going to start sending traffic through to your contest page. People will sign up if they're interested in winning the prize, and then you follow up with them with emails offering your reader magnet. So for example, when someone signs up for your contest, you send them an email that confirms their entry and says, hey, thanks for entering. The winner will be announced on X date. In the meantime, if you'd like to stay in touch and you're interested in reading some of my work for free, just click this link underneath and I'll send it to you for free. Here's some details about the book I'm offering. If you'd like to get it, just click this link. And then when the contest has ended and you've announced the winner, all you do is keep the people who click that link and then delete everybody else. That way, you're only keeping the people who have raised their hands and said, yes, I'm interested in hearing more about you and your work. Please tell me, please send me something to read, and I'd like to keep in touch. Now, I've used this approach dozens of times to build my email list up over the years, and one particularly exciting example was when I teamed up with 10 other authors, and we all offered everybody who entered the contest a copy of our book. So essentially, people were gonna be getting 10 thriller books for free, even if they didn't win the main prize, which I believe was a Kindle Paperwhite. And at the end of the contest, we had 6,500 people click on the link to say, yes, please keep in touch. So that's 6,500 people who are interested in reading books just like mine, who signed up to my email list, and now these are the people who now buy my new releases and my promotions. They're the guys who join my launch team and leave reviews. So this is a very cost-effective and relatively simple way of starting to grow an email list, because once you've started to grow that email list, it opens up a lot of other avenues for you, which is what we're gonna talk about right now. So I've managed to get rid of the freezing cold, but now I've come in here and the sun was just like blasting through the window. Um, so this is, I think, take three of this last section. So um, if anyone's wondering what it looks like kind of behind the scenes, um, then this is it. So I've been very careful to only include nice parts of my office in the shot. So um, yes, this is unfortunately the reality of it. So the next strategy, and this is particularly exciting, if you've started building an email list, you don't have to have a ton of people on there, but it makes it a lot easier, and that's cross-promotions. So in essence, this is basically just teaming up with other authors who are at a similar level to you, have a similar kind of audience reach, and then working together to promote each other's books. So for example, if you have 500 people on an email list and you find five other authors with a similar number on their email list, then you've just got access to five times as many people without having to spend a penny. Now we talked about cross promotions in some of the other videos on the channel, but in essence, what you're doing is you're working together and you're planning out some dates where you can talk about each other's books. So you might do this one at a time, or you might do a big group promo where you mention everybody else's book at the same time. Set up a simple page on your website that's got some links through to the Amazon store or the other ebook stores, and then everybody emails their own audience to tell them about this promotion. So it's super simple in principle, and it's exactly what we did for our launch of Galaxia, which was a box set that we launched in the sci-fi category. And by working together, we were able to hit the USA Today bestseller list purely through using email. So when you start growing your email list, you'll find that you get a lot more potential for driving sales through when you choose. And it opens the doors for working with other authors too. And then your growth is kind of compounded and you can start seeing some very big results very quickly. So you can probably see why an email list is so important. So once your books are optimized and the traffic is converting well and you're using reader magnets, you've used contests, you've used cross promotions, and there's several kinds of cross promotions that you can use. Again, there's a link underneath this video with an article that goes through all of them. And you're starting to see these results coming through. People are joining your email list, people are buying your books. At some point, it's gonna be time to scale up. And this is where paid advertising comes into play. And there's two main types of paid advertising. And the first type is essentially um, buying a spot 
in a daily email from one of the big email blast companies. And essentially with this, these companies, they set up mailing lists where readers can subscribe to get daily book deals in certain genres. And then they charge authors to feature their books in these daily emails. Now prices can range from anything from about $20 through to $1,500, $2,000, depending on the service you use. And services like BookBub, who have millions of readers on their database, can get you thousands of sales in a 24-hour period. But they can also be very expensive and very difficult to get into because there's so much competition. So it was around about this time where I got bored of being in the office and decided to come outside uh, to try and find somewhere to film the last segment. And I'm kind of dodging the rain um, and hoping my feet don't freeze off. So. We're gonna go and try and find somewhere uh, a bit more interesting to do the last segment. So the blaring sun has gone away and in between the rainstorms and howling wind, we might be able to find somewhere interesting um, just to do the last segment. So uh, let's go have a look. <laughs> The other type of advertising is where you have self-serve, usually pay-per-click advertising. And these are companies like Facebook ads, Amazon ads, and BookBub also have a self-serve platform as well. On these platforms, you will set a bid that you're willing to pay either for impressions or clicks. And then that bid is kind of pitted against hundreds, thousands or millions of other people also bidding on that impression or click. Usually whoever bids the highest wins and their ad gets shown. And then people seeing the ad can then click through to the page and buy the book. And that's it in a nutshell. It's a bit more complicated than that underneath the hood, but that's the general principle. So we'll cover these two in a bit more detail. So with the featured email platforms like BookBub and there's several others, I'll put a link underneath the video where you can check out some of the better ones. Chances are you're not gonna be getting a BookBub deal every single month because this is largely unheard of. It's very difficult to actually get into BookBub even if you can afford the prices. So what a lot of authors do instead, and this is what I recommend people do too, is they go with some of the smaller services, but they stack them up. So you might go with four, five, or even 10 of the smaller ad services and stack them up over sort of a five to seven day period. And this is important too, because if you can sustain sales for five to seven days, this tells the Amazon algorithm in particular that your book deserves more attention. It works better than say a single giant spike of sales through in the middle of the week. You wanna try and keep a sustained elevated level of sales. And this will help you with what's called the long tail of marketing, which is essentially where your efforts now are paying off in the longer term. So the Amazon algorithm in particular um, loves sustained sales. So if you can do that by stacking up some of the smaller ones, then this worked particularly well. And if you have several books in a series or in a catalog or collection, then you can rotate these promotions on a month to month basis and keep stacking those promos and keep elevating those sales, which is gonna to lead to an increase in ranking, exposure, and profits. And then of course, if you have the reader magnet inside the book as well, you're gonna get more people signing up for your email list, more people getting your automated emails, telling them about your other books, which gives you an opportunity to team up with authors who have a higher reach and a higher audience, and it's compounding that success. So really everything we're talking about, it all kind of works together. And the same is true of the self-serve ads as well. So when you're running ads on Facebook or Amazon or BookBub, it's particularly important that you've considered the optimization step we talked about at the beginning, because you're paying for clicks at this point. So if you're paying 50 cents for a click and you're only converting at 1%, it's gonna cost you $50 for every sale of book one. And if you're only making about $3.50 from that sale, every reader is gonna to have to buy 15 books from you, really just to break even. But if your click-through rate is higher and your conversion rate is higher, then it's gonna cost you a lot less. So if your conversion rate is 10% and you're paying 50 cents a click, each sale of book one costs you $5. If you're earning $3.50 per sale, then you lose money on the first book, but you make profit on any subsequent purchases. And this is why optimizing your book page and your read-through rate is so important. It doesn't matter what platform we're talking about, Facebook, Amazon, BookBub, or any other self-serve platform. The principle of optimizing that conversion rate and that read-through is gonna help you on all of them. So when anyone ever asks me about, you know, should I be advertising on Amazon or Facebook or BookBub, I always ask them to think about their catalog, their series. Are there enough books? Is there enough read-through? Are people converting high enough so that you are actually going to make profit on that ad spend. But the good news is it's entirely possible to get to that 
thousand dollar a month goal without ever touching self-serve ads. As long as you're writing books that people want to read and you've considered the cover, the description and other optimization steps, and as long as you're sending traffic to that book page and building your email list, then you're only gonna have to sell a handful of copies a day to hit that target. Remember what we said, if you've got that good read-through rate to get 10 sales a day, you might only have to drive three or four sales of book one to hit that target. And that makes life a lot easier. And as you've probably seen, you know, none of these tactics are used in isolation. We're doing everything. We're working through this process to make sure that we're sending as much traffic as possible, but also optimizing to convert as much traffic as possible and get it away from Amazon and onto our own platform so that we can control it and optimize it even more. So we're kind of taking tactics that kind of, they do work in isolation, but when you combine them together, the results are very, very powerful. So as a recap, what we wanna do, we wanna optimize our book pages. We wanna use reader magnets to get people on our own platform. We wanna use giveaways or contests to start growing an email list and get those people interested onto our database. We wanna be using cross promotions to team up with other authors and compound that growth. And then we wanna be looking at paid ads too. And certainly with the email services, you can start doing this pretty early on and start stacking them up and start seeing those results come through very quickly. And then when you're ready and you're ready to scale past that sort of thousand dollar a month level, you can start looking at the self-serve ad platforms like Facebook and Amazon and BookBub. And again, I'm gonna put a ton of resources underneath this video where we go into these things in a lot more detail. So definitely check those out. All right, I think I found somewhere. Let's use some camera magic. Right, there we go, this will do. So as I mentioned in the main video, everything we've talked about is designed to be used kind of in tandem, in combination, to create a process where more people are seeing your books, more people are buying them, and then more people are joining your audience, which means that you have control over your marketing message and what you send to people. You know, your communication is direct with the people who are actually buying your books. And if you need more detail on any of the steps we talked about today, check the links in the description. There's some articles in there. Um, and also check out my course opening as well. We've had 5,000 plus authors from all around the world go through my flagship training course, your first 10,000 readers, many of whom have gone on to become full-time authors. And I put on a very special deal for you. So check out the link to that underneath the video as well along with a bunch of testimonials from students who have been through the program and details on everything that you're going to get. Now the course also includes direct access to me if you need any email coaching or one-on-one -on -one help so spots are limited. It's going to be closing soon so if you're interested definitely check it out. So that's it from me today. We've covered a lot of ground. There's a bunch of articles and resources for you underneath this video and if you have any questions just drop a comment and I'll reply as soon as I can. So with that being said I'll see you all again very very soon.